as promised, I am going to show you today how a Stamparatus can make your stamping life a little bit easier, especially when you want to do some die cutting and you want to do a lot of die cutting. Let me put the Stamparatus out of the way for just a moment. So the Hippest Hippos is a celebration set currently for, you know, just a, two, a couple more weeks. And it comes with, well, it doesn't come with it, but there is also a celebration selection, Hippo Dies, that coordinates with it. And in those dies, there are three hippo images that coordinate with these three stamped hippos. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a lot of hippos with very little effort, or at least a lot less effort than normally it would take. So I have my three hippo stamps already placed onto my Stamparatus, and I it, it doesn't matter how I place them. This is just one method. I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. Now this is kind of junky cardstock. It's really, really cheap cardstock. It's a really uh, strange color. I'm not ever going to use this for anything. It's not stamping up. Uh, it was given to me. I'm going to take my ink pad, ink up my hippos, stamp onto this green piece here, and while I'm at it, and there's another way you can do this, but I'm gonna just sort of draw some lines around where my template goes. Now with this, I'm gonna set my stamps aside. I'm gonna bring in my dies that go with these hippos. Now part of what makes die cutting images like this difficult is you need to take the time to really line them up nicely so that you get a really good image cut. So it takes just a little bit of a little bit of time. And if I were to do this on every single hippo that I was going to be die cutting, say I wanted to make 10 cards, that's 30 of these hippos total. This would take me quite a while to do. But mass producing these die cuts is quite easy with the Stamparatus. All I have to do is take my time on one set. This set, my template. I'm gonna bring in my stamp and cut and emboss. And there goes one of my plates. Stamp one, two, plate one, two. Here's number three. And I'm gonna find where my other plate went. All the way under my table. I'm gonna bring in my cardstock with my hippos. And I'm gonna run them through my Stampin' Cut Emboss machine. This plate is getting very bowed. I need to replace that shortly. I'm gonna take these blanks out. These are nothing. I don't really need them for anything. What I need is the template that has the hole in it. All right, this is what I need. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my Stamparatus back in. I'm going to ink up my hippos. I have not moved them at all. Put them there. All right, this guy didn't ink up very well. I might want to ink her up again just so I can see where she's going. 
There we go. I'm going to bring my template back in. And put that so that the positioning of my template is really good. That looks really great right there. I'm going to put my magnets on. And now what I'm going to do is mass produce. What I have to do before I do that is I have to put find something that goes in these spots. I need blanks. I need pieces of white cardstock in the shape of hippos. And this is a step that I would do all at once all at once in one sitting. I'm only going to show you what I would do if it's two. Bring this in and I'm going to take my three dies and it doesn't matter how they're positioned on here. They can be upside down. Doesn't matter at all. I don't have to worry if they shift. They can shift all they want as long as they stay on this piece of cardstock. Now I've cut this piece of basic white cardstock just a little bit wider than my hippos are tall. And I wasted a little space there, but I don't wanna go back and fix it. So now I've die cut three hippos out. Get them out of the way. And I'm gonna do it again. Take my plate, put my cardstock back in here, get my dies, place them on there, and I would repeat this until I had as many of these hippos die cut as I needed. This is a great way to use up scraps that you might have. Let's pretend that I wanted to make 10 of these cards that uses three hippos on them, three different hippos. I've only got a partial number of the blanks, but let's pretend that I had 30 of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back in my Stamparatus I'm going to take my blanks, put them in the hole, I'm going to ink up my hippos, press down, and I have nice hippos all die cut now when i'm taking this out i want to make sure that i am not moving my green piece but even if i do move it i can see if i have to move it back because i've already stamped on this um, sheet in the back in the background so i can see if i do shift it and make adjustments accordingly i'm going to just ink up again and again, I'm going to have perfect placement because I'm just dropping these blanks into where they go. And using that template to get perfect results. And here's some more. So see, we have a bunch of hippos all done. And the more you have to do, now I'm all done because I have no more blanks. But now I have all of these done and I can, I can keep this for use another time. But probably, um, you know, you wanna do as much as you can right now, only because it is a pain to try to line these up without having stamped them first. So, but this template is good 
Um, it is good for longer, but it's probably better if it's a, it's easier if it's a one use. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, suppose I used this last time, right? I used this last time. I can't actually figure out where my rubber is right now because I can't see the rubber. I can't see through it. This is not a photopolymer stamp. If it were, it'd be a lot easier. But with these red rubber stamps, the only way I might be able to position this correctly is to kind of put this on here where, where it went. and put my stamps through so if i put my i can kind of see when it's in i can feel when it's in there kind of locks in place there is a little bit of a wiggle room depending on how i'm handling it this is definitely not as easy as it is the first time you're doing it so i would just do this close it and hope for the best. I could re-ink it to see how good a job I did, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to save this template. Now, as far as my pressing mechanism goes, this is an air hockey puck um, glider, or some people call it a chucky or a paddle. You can get these on Amazon. In, you know, you can buy them singly for like seven bucks. Actually, it's one that's kind of made for stamping. It's seven bucks. You can buy them if, as air hockey paddles for two for um, nine bucks, I think, something like that. You can get a package of four and split it with friends. But that's all this is, is an air hockey tool. You can make your own. You could buy a door handle so that's got a it's got a nice rounded top and makes it it's very comfortable to grab onto and then p take a piece of wood block maybe it's an inch thick have somebody drill a hole through it put a screw in it that goes and you know you screw your doorknob into it make sure that the screw is recessed in your wood a little bit then put a piece of foam over the top glue a piece to the wood and then you have your own custom made chucky or i think it's the proper term is barren, B-A-R-E-N. But if you don't want to go to the bother of making your own air hockey, I'm sure you can find somebody with one of these paddles or you can get them pretty cheap on Amazon. So thanks for watching.